It's time for America Outdoors Radio, the show that covers the outdoor scene across the U.S. of A. and the entire continent. Fishing, hunting, conservation, outdoor recreation, and great destinations, we cover it all every week. It's your country, your outdoors. Let's explore it together with your host, John Cruz. It's spring. Bears are emerging from their wintertime slumbers. They are hungry, and in some places, you need to be careful. A tragic case proving that point comes to us today from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle, which shares the story of a backcountry guide who was killed by a grizzly bear last week just outside of Yellowstone National Park. The man in question was 40-year-old Carl Mock, a beloved guide for backcountry adventure. That's a company providing guided trips in Yellowstone National Park. Mock was trout fishing alone on the Madison River when a 420-pound grizzly attacked him, mauling him in the process. Mock was able to call 911 for help, and there is evidence he attempted to deploy the bear spray he had with him, but... He died before being able to tell deputies and EMS workers what happened to him. Game wardens arrived at the scene to investigate the incident, and they were charged by that same grizzly. They were able to kill the animal, dropping it 20 yards away from their group. Investigating further, they discovered the reason for the attacks. The bear was defending a nearby moose carcass it was feeding on. It should be pointed out, getting killed by a grizzly bear in the Yellowstone region is a very rare thing. But it does happen. Since 2010, eight people have been killed by bears here. Our condolences go out to the friends and family of Carl Mock. It sounds like he was loved and will be missed by many. Speaking of bears, we'll be talking to Tyler Friel during the show today. He's in Fairbanks, Alaska, and he wrote a great article for Outdoor Life that's all about the proper shot placement when it comes to where to aim if you want to take down a bear, whether it's a common black bear or a big Alaskan brown bear. This is really important stuff, and I think you're going to learn something in the process. Something else Tyler will talk about is what rifle calibers work well when it comes to hunting bears. Personally, I'm a big believer in bigger is better when it comes to bears, and I know a lot of bear hunting happens in thick forested woods where the spring or fall weather can be damp and wet. That's where the all-weather lever action side gate rifle from Henry Repeating Arms comes into play. You can get this rifle in two calibers. The 3030 is perfect for white-tailed deer hunters, while the beefy 4570 cartridge will take down anything you come across to include one of those Alaskan brown bears. The side gate feature of this rifle allows you to easily load ammunition and the removable tube is handy to unload that ammo as well. As for the all-weather part, Henry uses a special hardwood and satin chrome plating that is actually even more rust resistant than stainless steel. On top of that, this rifle shoots straight right out of the box as a lifetime satisfaction guarantee and like all rifles from Henry Repeating Arms is made in America. Find out more about the all-weather lever action side gate rifle and find a dealer near you at henryusa.com and don't forget to ask for your free catalog and decals while you're there. That website again, henryusa.com. Okay, in case you're wondering what else we've got for you during today's program, it is turkey hunting season, and we'll be chatting with Jared Larson with Onyx Hunt Maps about the best states to hunt in America this year, depending on what kind of hunting you're doing. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation, and if you don't know what Onyx Maps can do for you as a hunter, we'll let you know more about that too. In addition to this, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, one of my favorite groups, is having their annual rendezvous the first week of June at Fort Missoula in Montana, and you are invited. Rachel Schmidt will join us to tell you more about this gathering of public land advocates who will be taking in demonstrations and seminars about hunting, fishing, wild game cooking, and even learning how to butcher a buffalo. Before we talk to Rachel, Jared, and Tyler, though, we thought we'd let you know about a big giveaway that's going on right now. Next on America Outdoors Radio, we want to give you a chance to win a $6,500 prize package. It's all part of the Frog Togs Big Bass Giveaway. And with us here to tell you more about it is Missy Thompson with TBA Outdoors. Missy, welcome to the show. Thank you. 
So why don't you tell our listeners about this Frog Togs Big Bass Bonanza giveaway? A lot of stuff from Frog Togs, a lot of stuff from other companies as well. Yes, we have a great list of prize partners this year participating. You can win anything from B&W Hitches, Duckett Fishing. We've got Grill from Fire Disc Grills. Abo Outdoors is a menswear company. Insight Fishing, we have Orca Coolers. We have things from Rapala or Rapala. I say it Rapala in the South. I don't know. Uh, Simpsons <laughs> Meat uh, has a great gift card to order steaks and that sort of thing. We have Turtle Box and we have Wiley X Eyewear. So everything from your eyeglasses to a great package of things that you can use on your boat and food and just about anything. Wow, I'm impressed. Now, Frog Togs is behind this, and we should talk about this company. I love the story. They've really carved out a niche for themselves when it comes to to rain gear, where they started, and waders, and now footwear, too. That's right. The company is about 25 years old. This is our 25th year, and they started out with just a real simple rain suit that was packable, and they have expanded from that which is one of our top-selling products still, but we've expanded into the waiter market, into a more technical rain suit, one that you could be used 365 days a year because it has layers that can be layered inside it. And then, of course, now into shoes. So from head to toe, Frog Togs has you covered now. You know, it, it's funny. I remember those original Frog Tog rain jackets. They were very lightweight. I remember that. When they first came out, they weren't quite as durable as they are now. But boy, they've come a long way. As a matter of fact, I know that Frog Togs is kind of like the preferred wear when it comes to rain jackets and bibs for a lot of guides and a lot of tournament anglers, too. Yes, we have quite a few guys on circuits wearing our gear, and a lot of it is because they're so dependable. The technical aspects of the suit are just amazing, and if you are in the market for a suit, they're very affordable, too. Uh, They fit right in a good price point, and we have a lot of different price points to offer. So, you know, if you have a family and, and kids coming up and you're having to change products quite frequently for sizes, you know, the Frog Togs is a great solution there. So it's a great mid-level price point and credible technical product. Oh, I agree. I agree. And folks, you can find out more by going to frogtogs.com. That's two G's on both the frog and the togs. Frogtogs.com. Mm-hmm. They've also got a Facebook page. And I guess my last question is this, getting back to the Big Bass Bonanza giveaway, how do folks enter for their chance to win the $6,500 prize package that's going on right now? Well, if you go to frogtogs.com, we have a slider on the home page. You can enter there. There are also ways to enter on Facebook. And this year, we have some fun new additions. So once you've entered, you'll be prompted for an additional opportunity to enter seven additional times. And it's liking our Facebook page or following this or, you know, that type of thing. So you can really enter up to eight times. Then also... We have weekly giveaways this year, which we've never done before. So while this $6,500 prize package will be given away May 27th, the the weekly prizes, you need to check in on the Facebook and Instagram. They're really on Instagram mostly each week to see what the additional packages are. And that'll last for a week each time. And they have a couple of things like like this or post that or share this. So it's pretty simple to do. So be sure to check back each week and see what else is being given away. For example, they're usually the packages range from $125 to $175 in the weekly packages. And this week coming up will be Rapala, Rapala will be the first one. And then after that, each week a new partner and a new group of prizes. All right. Well, lots of chances to win smaller prizes and, of course, the big prize. It's all part of the Frog Togs Big Bass Bonanza giveaway. It's going on now through May 27th. You can enter it at frogtogs.com. That's the website. Or go to their Facebook page. I know they put up a post about this on April 15th. So just scroll down to that post. You can enter there and look for them on Instagram, too, especially for the weekly giveaways. Missy, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you. Have a great one. Why book at Sportsman's Cove Lodge? 
Why is Alaska like no other place on Earth? It hasn't changed in thousands of years. From the way you get here on a float plane to the way you go out with the guides and the boats, it's just a professional experience. And I said, this is as good as it gets. I said, if you can't catch fish here, you can't catch fish anywhere. Your experience with us will leave you speechless. Book now at alaskasbestlodge.com. The Dalton in Oregon is your base camp for fishing fun. Reel in big salmon, tangle with steelhead, bass, and walleye, or wrestle a monster sturgeon to the boat. After the day is done, you'll find a variety of lodging options around town. Need to resupply? We've got you covered with sporting goods stores plus great dining, breweries, wineries, and can't-miss attractions like the Gorge Discovery Center. Plan your fishing getaway today at explorethedals.com. That's explorethedals.com. Hunting and fishing are exercises in hope. Before you head into the woods, you hope to tag out on a deer you'll have to field dress. Before you make that first cast, you hope for a big fish to clean and fillet. When your hopes are realized, you'll need a sharp knife. Whether you sharpen that blade on a power sharpener in the shop or a manual sharpener in the field, WorkSharp has the tool for you. Look for WorkSharp products in sporting and stores near you or online at WorkSharpTools.com. Campers, adventure seekers, hunters, and foodies. No matter the lifestyle, we can all agree on one thing. Great food and great people are worth remembering. At Camp Chef, we don't just make grills. We create each product knowing that a warm meal is always better when it's shared with those we love. Learn more about Camp Chef grills, smokers, and portable cooking equipment at CampChef.com. That's CampChef.com for a better way to cook outdoors. You're back in with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. Our next stop is taking you north to Alaska, Fairbanks, Alaska, to be exact. That's where we've got Tyler Friel on the line. He just wrote a really interesting article. You can find it at OutdoorLife.com that's all about bears, how difficult they are to bring down or not, and why shot placement is the key. Tyler, welcome to the show. No, thanks for having me. So let's start off with the premise about bears. They have the reputation of being one of the most difficult animals to bring down while hunting, but you argue that they aren't necessarily that difficult to bring down if you're shooting them in the right place. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly right. And I think there's a lot of, uh, of hoofed big game animals that I would argue are maybe even a little tougher to kill. Bears really aren't too tough to kill if you shoot them in the right place. Well, let's talk about the right place. I'm one of those people that just always believe that you go ahead and put that sight or that scope right above the shoulder, a little bit behind, and you're going to puncture the lungs just like you are on a deer. But I guess I'm wrong about that, aren't I? Yes, slightly. It goes back to the anatomy of bears. And their lungs and hearts sit slightly farther back than in most you know, deer and elk type animals where they have a brisket that comes out farther to the front where a bear's chest sweeps up between its legs pretty dramatically. And it's not a huge difference, but the lungs do sit farther back. And at certain shot angles, if you hug that tight to that shoulder, you might miss all the vitals and not even kill the animal. That's really interesting. And that goes a long ways towards explaining why bears have this reputation for being tough to bring down because we're shooting in the wrong place. We're missing the vitals. So you recommend shooting the middle of the bear, not just the middle, but the middle of the middle. Tell us more about that. Yeah, that's kind of an old timers term or or lingo for shot placement on bears. And what that's talking about is if the bear's standing perfectly broadside with his legs straight down below him, you kind of bisect that bear's body halfway in front of the front of the hips and behind the back of the shoulders, and then halfway between the top of his back and the bottom, right in the middle. And that's going to put you towards the rear of the lungs, but in the, the largest part of the lungs, pretty much every shot. And I'll I'll usually favor slightly forward of that, but that's a good rule of thumb to have. And, of course, always being aware of what angle that bear is standing at so you can visualize where their lungs are. I think the mistakes a lot of people make are shooting too far forward or shooting too far forward and low. The only bears I've seen lost have been shot too low and far forward, which would be a heart shot on a deer. 
but you completely miss anything vital on a bear a lot of times. So when you get the lung shot, they're not going to drop dead, but they are going to run, but they're not going to run far, are they? No, if you put your first shot through their lungs, they're going to die pretty quick. And it's normal for those bears to run, and even a little farther usually with a rifle, because uh, with a bow and a good sharp broadhead, they I think they feel it, but they don't know what happened. And it's typical that they'll run off a ways and just kind of tip over. They'll start walking sometimes even. So yeah, the most critical thing is just making sure you make that good first shot through both lungs and, and you've got them. Let's talk about calibers. I was very, very surprised to see some of your caliber choices for black bear. I always subscribe to the theory that, you know, you really need like a .30-06 or a three oh eight or maybe a forty five seventy even if you're going to be hunting bears. But when it comes to black bears, you go as low as a two forty three. Yeah, we uh, that's kind of an old family favorite. We killed a lot of black bears with a 243. And the biggest key with any caliber that you're using is just using a good bullet that's going to give you some expansion, but that's going to hold together and penetrate. Bears really are not that tough of a critter to get through. You know, so an animal like a moose is a lot harder to get through their hides and ribs than a bear is. And really, it doesn't take as much gun if you're careful with your first shot than most people would think. Even big rifles, sometimes you'll roll a black bear and they'll get up and run off, but, you know, they're just as dead as if you shot them with a two forty three or, you know, I've shot several with a twenty five out 6 You know, really, bullet construction and shot placement trumps all. There's certain situations where a larger caliber can be very handy, you know, if you're if you're backing up or if you it's really important to not have that bear get very far, then sometimes um it's advisable to use the biggest rifle you can shoot, but at the at the basic level you don't need a big rifle. Any any standard deer rifle with good bullets will do just fine on black bears. Let's talk about brown bears. They're a whole lot bigger and a whole lot tougher. I'm guessing you're not using a two forty three or a two seventy for those. Not typically and and it's a good rule of thumb to just use the the largest rifle you're comfortable with, but the principle of still making a good first shot does trump your caliber. You know, if you're specifically hunting, just having a good bullet is the most important thing. I mean, I know it's on the light side, but I know a lot of people who've killed big coastal brown bears with 308 and, uh, you know, 7 millimeter 08. Uh, 30-06 is, is plenty of gun for a brown bear if, if you're hunting. Now, you'll you'll see a lot of hunting guides carrying 375s, 416s, 458s, stuff like that. Um, those big rifles are handy, and if you can hunt with one, there's nothing wrong with that. But for a guide who may have to be dealing with a wounded bear and that needs that extra oomph to it, um, it can be really handy for them. Let's talk about one other thing when it comes to shooting bears. Uh, there's some outfitters that subscribe to the theory of breaking down a bear. In other words, shooting it in the leg so that it can't run off like a bear that is poorly shot <laughs> could run off. I, I just can't see how this is a great idea for the average hunter. Yeah, I think it's a terrible idea. There are some outfitters up there very accomplished that subscribe to it. But a lot of times, you know, they have one or two guys backup shooting that are ready to put more shots into that bear to keep it from getting into the brush. And that's the whole principle behind it is, is keeping that bear from, from getting where you can't see him and, and a dangerous follow-up. But the problem is that if you're shooting for both shoulders, if the bear's positioned where you can shoot both shoulders, that bear's not going to be positioned with any vital organs between those shoulders. And it's a much smaller target aiming for, you know, a shoulder blade or a humerus than a double lung shot that's 100% lethal every time. So if even if you happen to miss one shoulder and not get any vitals, they can still move on three legs pretty darn well. And that's just a recipe for a lost bear. If you, ha- if you just choose to shoot them through both lungs, the first shot every time uh, they're going to die and they're going to die uh, cleanly and quickly like we want. So when it comes to bear hunting, shoot for the middle of the middle of that animal. You're going to drop that bear in a hurry. You're not going to have to worry about losing that bear, and you're going to be able to take home a whole lot of meat and a hide, too. One more thing I want to talk about. we got about 30 seconds here. You've got a podcast. It's called Tundra Talk. What's that all about? 
Well, in a nutshell, that's just a podcast that covers hunting, fishing, trapping, just all around life in Alaska stuff. You know, from the perspective of those of us who of those of us who live here, there's a lot of people that are under the radar and have a lot of great experience and cool stories, and I just like to share those. All right. Well, look for Tundra Talk at podcast platforms all over the place. The author of it is Tyler Friel. He's also the author of a lot of articles. You'll find it at OutdoorLife.com and other publications, too. The podcast, one more time, Tundra Talk. Check it out and get in on the Alaska hunting, fishing, and trapping lifestyle. Tyler, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you. We've been telling you about Sportsman's Cove Lodge in southeast Alaska for a while now, and there's a reason. They are the only Alaska lodge we talk about in this show. It's because they're truly Alaska's best lodge. The adventure starts with a float plane ride from Ketchikan, after which you'll get the chance to experience some of the best hospitality, food, and wonderful people you'll ever meet. Wildlife is abundant, from bears and deer to eagles and whales, and let's not forget the reason you're here, the fishing. Halibut, salmon, lingcod, rockfish, true cod, and more. It's all waiting for you in abundance at Sportsman's Cove Lodge. Book your trip today at alaskasbestlodge.com. That's alaskasbestlodge.com for Sportsman's Cove Lodge. Ready to step up to a quality-built rifle or shotgun that's a true classic? Check out Henry Repeating Arms, American-made. There's over 200 models to choose from in a variety of finishes and calibers for hunters and target shooters. Many of these are lever-action models with a look right out of the Old West. Don't be deceived, though. Henry Repeating Arms are modern, rugged, accurate, reliable, and have a lifetime guarantee. Find out more and order a free catalog today at HenryUSA.com. That's HenryUSA.com. Welcome back to America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. It is turkey season. I am well aware of that. Thank you very much. And that's why we have Jared Larson on the line. He's with Onyx Maps. And if you go to Onyx, spelled O-N-X, maps.com, you're going to see a great article about the best states in America for turkey hunting. And it's not ranked as in this is the number one state, number two, number three. No, this is about best states for turkey hunting in different methods of turkey hunting. Jared, welcome aboard. Hey, appreciate you having me on, John. I'm uh, looking forward to talking about this. This was a pretty fun blog to work on with the team here at Onyx. Well, I sure enjoyed the read, and you sure gave me some good ideas for road trips, too. Let's start off in Alabama. You've got that listed as the best state for turkey populations and shooting multiple birds. Yeah, for sure. So what we did is we kind of canvassed some of our partners, and Alabama was a top pick for the hunting public, Zach Farenbaugh. I've actually never had the pleasure to to hunt Alabama, but his sentiment was just that there's there's a lot of turkeys in Alabama and they have a pretty substantial amount of public land for being a a non-west state. And I mean at this point in the season, I'd probably look elsewhere, but if you're looking to uh plan and a late March, early April turkey trip for next year. I've heard nothing but good things about Alabama. Like any southeast state, it's going to be a challenge, but I think that's what a lot of turkey hunters are after is that game of cat and mouse, and, and Alabama can certainly give you that. And when we're talking about shooting multiple birds, I understand you can harvest up to five birds between the spring and fall season. Is that correct? Yeah, so Alabama definitely has some some pretty liberal turkey limits, you know, at, at this point in time. So certainly get down there and do what you can do about punching a few of those tags. Let's talk about the best state in the nation for resident turkey hunters that don't want to travel far from home. That would be the state you live in, Montana. Yeah, so Montana is definitely, I would say, kind of a, a hidden gem. You know, I believe you can shoot six long beards in the spring season if you draw a, a turkey permit and then are, are dedicated enough to make the rounds throughout the different state with the, each individual regional tags. But great turkey populations in much of the state and, and, you know, fairly few turkey hunters as compared to many other places. So 
lots of public ground to roam and, and plenty of turkeys. So I would encourage you, if you live in Montana, for sure go get a turkey tag. Even if you don't, it's definitely a, a worthy state to visit if you're trying to notch a, a Merriam's off your list. Speaking of hunting different regions, or in this case, zones, the state of Wisconsin, you've got that listed as the best state for getting into the turkey zone, and that's because of the way that the seasons are structured there. Yeah, so I'm a little biased here. I grew up in Wisconsin, and it is certainly my favorite state to hunt turkeys in just for that exact reason. They only give you a seven-day window for each tag that you have, but the cool part about Wisconsin is five of the seven zones have uh, a pretty high surplus of tags available that go on sale in March. So if you're an avid turkey hunter, you can spend a lot of time, especially later in the season, you know, chasing a ton of different birds if you're willing to put on the miles on your truck and bounce between a couple zones and enjoy hunting turkeys in May like I do. Now, most of us hunt turkeys with shotguns, but you could also do it with a bow and arrow. And the best state for archery hunting you've got is Nebraska. Yeah, so Nebraska was one that I've linked up with numerous buddies, did a spring break trip out there for a lot of years, because, yeah, they typically open around March between the 20th and 25th of March for archery only. And so it's just one of those states that's right in, you know, right in the center of the flyover states there. So it's it's not a terrible travel length from really anywhere in the country and opens up early like that and just gives you an opportunity to go chase them with, with archery equipment, which is certainly more of a challenge. But I've never had a problem finding birds in Nebraska, which is the beauty of it. You always feel like you're in the game, plethora of birds. And just a fun hunt to get on, you know, before you're able to to chase them in a lot of states, you know, once April rolls around. Love it. All right. Drum roll, please, for the best state for turkeys in every field. That would be the volunteer state of Tennessee. Yeah, so Tennessee has been a state long on my list. And honestly, of, of our partners that we canvass, a lot of folks really, really resonated with Tennessee with super healthy bird populations. You get to shoot numerous birds. And just some super cool terrain to hunt in. You know, the Smokies down there offer a lot of public land and a lot of just big rolling timber. And I don't know if you've uh, you've spent time with long beards in the timber, but something about those Easterns gobbles, it'll just rattle you. So it's definitely at the top of my list to get there. Um, but a lot of folks had nothing but high praise for Tennessee turkey. Well, if this doesn't get you wanting to go on a road trip for Turkey, I don't know what does. And thanks to Jared, you've got some great ideas about where to go. If you want to find more ideas, go to onyxmaps.com. they got great articles there, great blogs. And this is one of them, the best turkey hunting states in America. Again, onyx spelled O-N-X maps.com. For our five or six listeners that may not be familiar with the Onyx Map app, why don't you tell them about it? Yeah, totally. So first things first, if you just go to the App Store and search on X Hunt, you can download the app and it's going to give you a seven day free trial as soon as you create an account. So I would recommend if you haven't tried it, go do that right before your turkey season. Utilize it, trying to locate a bird, check it out. But the most accurate and up to date property ownership available, it's going to color code all private and public lands. If you're seeking permission, you can query any parcel and it's going to give you that tax address. That way you can send a letter, look up a phone number and try to get in touch with those folks. And also the ability to you know, save maps for offline use so you don't need service to use it as a fully functional GPS. You can drop custom waypoints to mark you know, birds that you're seeing. You can attach photos to them, which I use for trail cameras, you know, come fall, chasing deer, all sorts of useful applications with the Onyx Hunt app. So I would just encourage you to go to onxmaps.com or on your app store on your phone, download it today, check out the seven-day trial, and, uh, and put it to work. You know, it just amazes me how far we've come when it comes to mapping and information you can get. I mean, I'm an older guy. I'm in my mid-50s, and in my studio right behind me is a state of Washington BLM map that I got several, several, several years ago. <laughs> and But, I mean, and I got it because... You mentioned that. Well, it has color-coded private and public lands. Well, in this case, it's got the public lands color-coded, whether they're tribal or national forest or national park. But it's a statewide map. It's really not that useful except to give you a, a ballpark idea of where to go. The thing about Onyx maps is, I mean, you can dial it really, really into the point of... Am I on the property line? Am I over the property line? And again, that tax parcel information 
so you can get permission to hunt or at least contact those landowners and try to get permission, that is a complete game changer, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, really the biggest thing for me is is it just gives you so much more confidence in the field. You know, if you spent any time hunting public lands, a lot of times there might not be a corner post or a fence. And I always just hated the experience of, you know, looking over your shoulder, for, for a lack of a better term, wondering if you were on the right parcel, staying within the bounds of the law. And Onyx just takes all the guesswork out of that. You know exactly where you're standing, and you know exactly where you can and cannot be. So it just makes the whole outdoor experience a little bit more enjoyable when you're not concerned about, you know, these outside factors of am I where I'm supposed to be. Is Onyx Maps, is it the biggest app, best-selling app of its type right now? Because there are a few out there. Yeah, it is. It is for sure the most used and the number one uh, hunting GPS app out there. So, again, I would definitely encourage you to put the seven-day free trial to work and, uh, you know, use that as your turkey seasons are beginning, wherever you're listening from. And I'll be, uh, I'll be dang surprised if you can't find some use out of it. Oh, absolutely. And we're not just talking turkey hunting, folks. We're talking any type of hunting that you do. Onyx Maps is going to be something you're going to want to have. And by the way, if you're an angler that likes to travel in the backcountry and some off-the-grid places, so to speak, this is also a wonderful app to have. Your first stop is onyxmaps.com. That's onxmaps.com. Or just go to the App Store, look for Onyx Maps, download it. Like Jared said, get that seven-day free trial and dive into it see what it's all about i think you're going to get it for the rest of your life once you do jared thanks for sharing this with us today on america outdoors radio hey really appreciate the time john This portion of the show was brought to you by our friends at WorkSharp. They're the fine folks out of Ashland, Oregon, who make knife and tool sharpeners that you can use, whether you're hunting or fishing or camping or maybe in your shop, maybe in your kitchen for all of the knives and tools you need sharpened every day when you work and play. WorkSharp tools can be found online at WorkSharpTools.com or You can find them in sporting goods stores and hardware stores all over our great nation. Just look for WorkSharp products to sharpen your knives and your tools because nothing is worse than trying to get the job done right with a dull blade. Campers, adventure seekers, hunters, and foodies. No matter the lifestyle, we can all agree on one thing. Great food and great people are worth remembering. At Camp Chef, we don't just make grills. We create each product knowing that a warm meal is always better when it's shared with those we love. Learn more about Camp Chef grills, smokers, and portable cooking equipment at CampChef.com. That's CampChef.com for a better way to cook outdoors. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is the voice for your public lands, waters, and wildlife. From the Canadian Yukon to the Florida Everglades, we're stepping up to conserve North America's public lands, defend our hunting and fishing traditions, and expand public access to the outdoors. Our outdoor heritage depends on sportsmen and women like you speaking up for the natural resources that sustain our way of life. Find out how you can get involved at backcountryhunters.org and become a BHA member today. The election is over, and this is not another political ad. But with the change in president, there is uncertainty uncertainty in the market. Will it be up or will it be down? Uncertainty on how the new administration will handle taxes for your retirement. A new report states that the Biden administration may take away key tax benefits to traditional retirement plans. But what if there was a better way, a way to save for retirement tax-free? We can help business owners, freelancers, and regular working folks get on track with their retirement without risk and without taxes. For more information, get your no-cost tax-free retirement income strategy guide now by calling 888-585-1615. That's 888-585-1615. Find out how sound investment principles can give you a retirement where you eliminate the spend down of your savings and create more income for your retirement tax-free. Call today and get the free guide, 888-585-1615. That's 888-585-1615. Call now, 888-585-1615. 
Looking to reel in the marketing opportunity of a lifetime? Then set the hook because we've got it right here. America Outdoors Radio has sponsorships available, and we offer an affordable platform to reach thousands of listeners interested in fishing, hunting, and the outdoors. Find out more by contacting host John Cruz through his website at AmericanOutdoorsRadio.com. That's AmericanOutdoorsRadio.com. But hurry, if you wait too long, this big opportunity might just get away. That's AmericanOutdoorsRadio.com. Next up on America Outdoors Radio, we're checking in with Rachel Schmidt. She's with the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, and their rendezvous, their big get-together, was canceled last year due to COVID, or at least it was a virtual event instead of an in-person event. But it is an in-person event this year. It's taking place at Fort Missoula in Montana. And it would be very fair to say that this rendezvous is definitely going old school. Rachel, welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you having us on to talk about Rendezvous. Yeah, we are so excited for this year's gathering. It's been a long time since we've seen each other in person. In Boise, most folks were staying at area hotels, and hotels are an option in the Missoula area, but most people, they're going to be camping, aren't they? Yeah, that's what makes it um, so much fun. We're really going back to our roots, and honestly, you know, as backcounter hunters and anglers and all of us that love the outdoors, camping is really at the heart of what we do. So we actually have a huge huge outdoor space with two different camping areas. We'll be able to accommodate many tents and campers. So however you want to come and join in the fun, we'll have a space for you. And, you know, last year, we certainly were very disappointed that we couldn't meet in person. We did hold the rendezvous in a virtual format. But what we really found out is that so many people who hadn't traditionally been able to make the travel, take the time off, all of those things that prevented them from attending rendezvous in the past, they were actually able to attend. And so this year, of course, because there are some fluctuations with COVID. There's varying levels of comfort with exposure for different folks. We're actually offering the rendezvous, of course, in person, Fort Missoula. It's going to be an amazing party. And we're offering it live virtually as well. So about 75% of the content that you'll be able to experience in person, you'll also be able to buy a virtual ticket and experience it all kind of live streaming, man on the street style. So there's something for everyone. And and this will enable everyone who would like to be included because everyone's welcome at what we have to do. Uh, everybody can attend. So we're really looking forward to it. The dates are June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Again, Fort Missoula, Montana for the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Rendezvous. There's some events that have always taken place, though some have a twist, and you've got some brand new ones. Let's start off with the workshops and seminars. These are always really popular at the rendezvous, but this year it's a little bit different. You've got villages set up with different specialties. Tell our listeners more. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, everybody loves to come and, you know, get education, watch demonstrations, whether it's bird hunting, whether it's brain tanning hides. So this year, since we are going old school and we have this huge outdoor space, we've broken it up into three different categories. We're having a fishing area or village hunting village, and a wild game village. And within those areas, from 9 a.m. to noon, we're going to have a list, and you'll be able to look, of all sorts of different demonstrations or workshops that will be happening kind of simultaneously in this area. So you can definitely like head over to the fishing village and you'll be able to learn some tips and tricks on fly fishing, or you'll be able to be in the hunting village, get some tips on calling in turkeys or elk, uh, along with a whole bunch of other activities. And then of course, wild game. We all love cooking and we all love eating what we're doing out there. So we've got a lot of fun stuff going on with some amazing chefs from all over the country in the wild game village. Something that's related to wild game. This is something brand new for this year. The bison breakdown. This sounds absolutely amazing. Tell our listeners more about this. You bet. We're taking full advantage of the fact that we have a giant outdoor area endless room, freedom to really do whatever we want. And, you know, all of us have so much fun. We're able to go out in the woods and harvest wild game and fish. We forage. And so everybody is interested in how do you break down an animal from start to finish? So whether it's gutting methods, skinning methods, um, actually breaking up different cuts of meat. And so what we're doing is we're bringing in an entire buffalo, literally an entire buffalo. And we will be starting from the beginning. We're going to start skinning it. 
all the way down to breaking it down, cooking various pieces throughout the couple days, and it'll culminate in a Saturday night bison feast for everybody in attendance. That sounds, like I said, absolutely amazing. Something else that's new this year, the Conservation Carnival. Sounds like a little humor is involved with this. What's this all about? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, we all just really like to have fun. I mean, doing this good, hard work on behalf of public lands and wildlife and water, our hunting and fishing opportunities, you know, this is a great fundraiser for us to help support the work of all of our members. So we're going to have a whole bunch of different games set up throughout the uh, rendezvous space. All of our partners, corporate partners, or other partners will have games set up as well. To participate in each of the games, you can just purchase a little raffle ticket. You'll have opportunity to win stuff at every station. But yeah, it'll be a great, fun opportunity to probably challenge your buddy to an axe throwing competition in order to raise some money for conservation. So we're just, we have fun with it. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll get a dunk tank and we can uh, take a turns dunking each other. You just never know. <laughs> I love it. It. All right. In addition to this, folks, uh, two staples that they always have at the Rendezvous Campfire Stories at night with some great stories told about hunting, fishing adventures and more. And the Wild Game Cook-Off where different chapters from around North America get together. They put together some really interesting dishes. I'm talking everything from in the past wild sheep to rattlesnake and a whole lot more. And a panel of judges judge them and decide which is the best. Sometimes they even have some samples for you, too. That's going to be there, too. Again, the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Rendezvous, June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is all about protecting our public lands, keeping them in public hands so that you and I can recreate on them and hunt and fish and enjoy the wildlife and everything else they have to offer. What's the website folks need to go to to register and get in on this, Rachel? You can go to our webpage, that's backcountryhunters.org, or just go ahead and Google search Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. You're going to see a tab there that says Rendezvous 2021. That's where you can go and get all of your weekend tickets. You can get tickets for special events like our field-to-table dinner with guest chefs. You can get tickets for our wine and whiskey tasting um, and find it all there. If you have any questions, you can email or call us, and we're happy to help you out. Looking forward to seeing everybody, whether it's in person or over the screen. It's going to be nice to get a little bit back closer to normal, and one way to do it, folks, is through this wonderful event at Fort Missoula in Missoula, Montana. It's the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Rendezvous. One more time, June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, the website to go to backcountryhunters.org. Rachel, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Thank you so much for having me. Continuing with this week's edition of America Outdoors Radio, it's time to talk record fish. This is really becoming one of my favorite parts of our program because I love to share what for most anglers is the fish of a lifetime. I mean, how many of us actually land in the record books with our fish, right? This week's record is a world record and it might be a fish you might not be too familiar with. It's the spotted gar from the Missouri Department of Conservation. We learned that Devlin Rich from Williamsville, Missouri was fishing at Wapapello Lake on February 27th when he reeled in a 10-pound, 9-ounce gar, which is not only a new Missouri state record, but also a world record fish. The previous record being a 9-pound, 12-ounce gar caught back in 1994. What's unusual about this catch is the fact that Devlin actually hooked it with a rod and reel. Gar tend to rise up to the surface and take in air, making them a favorite target for anglers using bows and arrows but as you can see here sometimes they'll take a bait or a lure too way to go devlin it's not too often you can break both a state and world record on the same day congratulations on your new record It's time to wrap up this show, and I don't know about you, but every time I share one of those record fish stories, I just get the urge to go fishing. Though I've got to admit, I've got kind of an urge to go turkey hunting, too, after talking to Jared Larson with Onyx Hunt Maps. And my thanks to Tyler Friel for a great interview about bear shot placement. I learned a lot, and I hope you did, too, during that segment. Last but not least, always great to talk to Rachel Schmidt. 
Before she was at Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, she was actually working for the state of Montana in the outdoors recreation field. And before that, she was with Kimber. Yes, the ones that make those very fine pistols and hunting rifles. My thanks, as always, to all of our guests that make this a great show for you to listen to. It's time to go, but if you didn't catch our entire show today, you can catch it in a few days when we upload it as a podcast. You can find it on our Facebook page at America Outdoors Radio or on our website at AmericaOutdoorsRadio.com and on podcast platforms all over the place. Just look for America Outdoors Radio or America Outdoors Radio podcast. You'll find this show and all sorts of past episodes to listen to as well. Here's hoping that the sun is shining on you this week, that you are blessed in the days ahead, and I will leave you with this until next week. Get outside. Have some fun. Fishing, hunting, hiking, paddling. I don't care what it is. After all, it is your country and you're outdoors, so get out there and enjoy it. <laughs>